Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. Rose Valley Winery committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold-hearty grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road, Rose City. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Greenbrier Golf Course, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. You'll love this beautiful, professionally designed 18-hole course with a bulky golfer in mind. From pro to beginner, Greenbrier will have you returning for more. Enjoy the watered fairways, driving range, full-service restaurant, bar with Wi-Fi, and gift shop. Greenbrier, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Today's journeys take us to the country and the Liberty Pine Stables, nestled in the rolling hills of Ogemaw Kelly. We share the day with owner Sean Beardsley, who's spreading the word about natural horsemanship. It's the process of communicating with your horse through love and respect, putting a whole new spin on horse sense. It's making riding a lot more fun for you and the horse. Then we're heading across the Big Mac Bridge to Lake Superior State University. Our Michigan Magazine Museum crew is on a day trip. And the next stop is a visit with Professor James Moody. This professor is one of the university's more colorful characters and close friend to our museum curator, Nelson Yoder. Join us this week as we turn the pages of another Michigan magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Green pastures, blue skies, and plenty of land spreading out into the horizon. Trails to explore and nature to appreciate. For the lover of horses, that's a perfect scene. Not only for the riders, but also the horse. Horses and horse riding has long been a popular pastime, so much so that horse owners can develop quite an emotional relationship with their beloved animal, and vice versa. To establish this relationship takes special effort and knowledge, the knowledge of the language of horses. Like any language, it takes time to learn, but with patience and love, the rewards can be awesome, and if continually nurtured, can grow and last a lifetime. Nowadays, more and more trainers are turning away from breaking and training horses with force and fear and turning more to what is termed natural horsemanship. Learning the natural language of horses, speaking through gestures and body language, the language of love and respect through natural horsemanship is bringing back the joy of riding to many. In Michigan, we discovered Liberty Pine Stables, located in the heart of Ogemaw County near Rose City, actively promoting this natural horsemanship through personal training classes for both animal and master. Our visit with owner and trainer Sean Beardsley quickly, enthusiastically shed a new light on the process. Sean told us she's been a horse lover all her life, and that love has quickly developed into a mission after moving to northern Michigan and purchasing property in the rolling Ogemaw Hills. We actually moved up to Rose City in 2000 and in 2002 we built our barn and I've been around horses my whole life and it wasn't until 2000, probably 2002, that I got really interested in the study of natural horsemanship. All right, and that's what we have here is a, a beautiful farm, acreage, ranch, what would you call it? A uh, 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 farm, farm, probably, yeah. yeah. De devoted to the, the, the world of horsemanship, more or less. And, Absolutely. And something that you called uh, natural type horsemanship, is that yes. what it is? Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, your love has grown to helping others understand what this is all about too. Exactly. So what's your mission here at uh, Liberty Pines? What I would like to do is help people in this area to understand how their horses think and to help them learn to play with their horse, mm. to have fun with their horse, and using horse psychology. Horse psychology? Yes. Horse sense? Is yes, that, uh, exactly. <laughs> horse sense. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's not a bad thing. No. Okay. No. Horses, you've, if you give 
the horse the chance to think something through. It's amazing where if you don't have to use force, you can help the horse to just think its way through a problem or a situation and um, you get a lot of great results doing it that way. There's no fight involved. Uh -huh. Cooperation type thing. Exactly. Right? Horses are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. Aren't they? Oh, they Very learn smart. faster than humans, really? actually. Yes, they do. Okay, okay. So, as far as seeing people, you know, use whips and spurs and things of that sort, what do you say to them? That's not necessary? Well, you know, spurs, if they're used correctly, mm -hmm. are fine. Mm -hmm. um, spurs. Uh, if you're using a spur for speed, mm -hmm. that's not really what they're designed for. Spurs are designed for moving a horse mm -hmm. sideways or, yeah, it, it's more of a directional tool. Right, more of a nudge than a jab. Right. Okay. All right. So, all right, so how did you get into this world? I mean, what was the spark that got you into it? Actually, it was in 2002, I went to the equine affair and I saw uh, Pirelli, Pat Pirelli and his wife Linda and I saw such amazing things that the horses were doing and without uh, bridles, in other words that's where the word Liberty comes from is that's where I named my farm Liberty Pines mm -hmm. um, and I saw the horses working at Liberty and I just thought this is so awesome this is what I've been looking for instead of using um, bigger bits, mm -hmm. just getting the horse to work with you and be a partner with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so through the Prelly program and also a lot of different natural horsemanship people, I've um, studied a lot of the different ones, but my main focus was through the Prelly program mm -hmm. and working through the levels. And that's basically where where it all started was at the equine affair. Okay, what was your next step? What, what you, you got all this information, you got all this inspiration, right. now, what did you do? Well, <laughs> I actually won a ticket at, to go see Pat and Linda. So I went to their savvy conference and then from there I decided that I needed to go spend some time in Colorado and I actually got signed up for the um, last uh, level three class that Pat did personally. Mm -hmm. So I was in his class for a two week program and I got my level two there with Pat. And then I went on, um, went to his Florida center after that and um, just continued through the levels. I'm now a level four student. Um, I am not a certified Pirelli trainer. And I just thought with all the knowledge that I've acquired through the different studies I've done, I'd like to spread it in this mm -hmm. area and just help people locally. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm in the process of getting this place ready to do is just have maybe some clinics here and even have some Prelly professionals maybe mm -hmm. come. And, um, but. I love giving classes to kids and helping them understand first comes safety, then, you know, the fun begins. And so, you know, I like to teach the kids first to be safe. That's the number one thing. Right. And the seeds that you're planting in the younger people now, maybe they'll go on to get this sort of fight. You never know. Right. Yeah. Right. You plant the seed and, and spread the knowledge that you know and your love. You've got to have a love for these animals, and it's hard not to love these animals. I mean, they look to be kind of pretty much devoted and uh, willing to please. Absolutely, yeah. but when people don't have the education yeah. behind them, a lot of people will get out of the get out of horses very quickly because mm -hmm. they see someone who's done well with a horse, and they think I'm going to get me a horse now, and I'm going to, mm -hmm. you know, just they think it's going to be very easy to. Right. Just have, I'm going to go show. Well, first you have right. to have the foundation before you, you know, where I say build the cake first and mm -hmm. the icing comes later. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing with my horses is building a great foundation on them. I've got two Rockies right now that are in training and I'm using uh, the natural horsemanship skills 
and um, I actually at my age I started my first horse just recently I've only had her for two months it's the one on the right hand side the Rocky and okay. she's really come a long way I'm already riding her with a just a halter and and then I've got two more Rockies out there one of them is um, my number one student over here Don that's his horse that's in training here and I'm giving him lessons. And he's a two-year-old. Okay. They have a happy pasture. That's yeah, what I it thought. It looks like a happy pasture. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and these are great, great horses, well-trained as far as the natural and the... Don, tell me, what got you interested in? I know you, you showed up here doing, the, 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 doing the, some of well, the caretaking maintenance, but what, what got you into it? Well, probably that Rocky of hers. Uh -huh. When he first came in about a year and a half ago, he was just a little character. Uh, they grab you by surprise. They're loving. In your wildest dreams, did you have this in your mind as you were growing up, or is it just a, kind of a sequence of events that led you to the love of horses and what your mission is nowadays? Well, I started at four years old riding. Really? Yeah, and I think some people are born with it. They just have that love that won't ever leave them. And then other people fall into it, like Don. Um, he, we hired him just to help us with the lawn, and the next thing you know, he <laughs> fell so in love with the horses that now he spends his time at the barn, and my husband's doing the lawn work. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> what type of a person would you say is a horse lover? I mean, what type of a personality does it take to really, you know, expand in what your love is? Does it take a, a special person? I, I think someone has to know how much work they're getting into, um, dedication, mm -hmm. patience, persistence, um, but once the love is there first, then everything else is, it just falls right into place. You think there's kind of a misconception that people are going to hit the pastures like Roy Rogers and Dale Evans? And Absolutely. That That's what people... People don't understand that first you have to be safe and these are these can be very very dangerous animals mm -hmm. and if you're someone just starting out you really need to get an education before you just jump on and go mm -hmm. and that's what we do just a ton of groundwork with our horses and we call it playing with them on the ground and um, mm -hmm. just following through with the safety aspect and that's the number one goal. Mm -hmm. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Canyons Lakeside Resort and Marina, located on the shores of beautiful Sage Lake. Get away to their newly remodeled beautiful bed and breakfast or their historic 13-room hotel. Special events and activities for all ages. Call now or go online for more information on this Michigan treasure. 33 Motorsports Park family racing fun for all ages and skill levels. Three tracks located on M33 in Oscoda County. Come watch or join in the action all year long. Developed for motorcycles, quads, UTVs, and snowmobiles. 33 Motorsports Park. Discount Foods down Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Rose City Drug, just south of the Rose City city limits at 2640 North M33. Featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated and extremely accurate computer-filled prescription process. Here at Rose City Drug, we're a family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service. And we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled. On a previous edition of Michigan Magazine, we join the Michigan Magazine Museum staff on one of their frequent day trips of Michigan Discovery. Our traveling ambassadors, Nelson Yoder, Rhonda Stutzman, Aubrey, and Millie Socia, are exploring the eastern Upper Peninsula on this trip. Last week, we followed them on the first leg of the journey with stops at Moran Ironworks of Onaway before heading across the Big Mac and on to the Antlers Restaurant in Sault Ste. Marie. So far, it's been a journey of fun, excitement, and fellowship, learning about the unusual and uniqueness one will find if one just takes the time to explore the side roads. On this edition, we find the group leaving the Antlers for a short jaunt to Lake Superior State University to visit with an acquaintance and former colleague of Nelson Yoder, Professor James Moody. 
Professor Moody and Nelson's friendship goes back to the years when both were teaching at Greenville College in Greenville, Illinois. The two keep in touch and on occasion make a point to visit one another. Today was a special treat since the group has heard much about Nelson and the professor's friendship. Once we were inside the professor's university office, the objects and sights that surrounded us were like magnets to our eyes and minds. We knew we were in for a most fascinating visit. Join us now. I'll have to tell you why this office, my justification as to why the office is uh, full of all this interesting debris. Uh, the philosopher Plato said that you should have, to sort of inspire you, you should have examples of the good, the beautiful, the brave, the noble, and the perfect. So it includes, of course, heroes of various uh, uh, kinds, uh, von Humboldt and Darwin and uh, Brunel, and then copies of art pieces, you know, from classical antiquity, that sort of thing. And then I treated myself to this piece of chinoiserie, the, uh, the secretary, um, when I, for my 60th birthday. Wow, okay. Is that ever nice? Is and uh, new or old? Oh well, no, it's a it's a copy of a one that you would have had in colonial America, oh, okay. except it's not the full height because they wanted uh, nine thousand dollars for a full sized one. <laughs> the skulls are um, various uh, ancestral skulls. I used to teach physical um, anthropology, so I uh, left them around. Uh, perhaps they're uh, they're um, they seem a little macabre, but. They're, uh, you know, our old they Peking man and so forth, yes. I ha used to have a, a real skull, and a young lady said to me, uh, came in and she said, is that real? And I said, yes, that's a 16-year-old girl. And she said, I kind of paused and then said, did you know her? Which I thought was a very funny thing to ask, you know. I don't know if she's feeling a little uneasy, but I assured her I never kept any student skulls. <laughs> yeah. Just just ancestors. Yeah. And these are all casts, of course, but they look like uh, oh, old bones. Guess. If people are going to call themselves artists, they have to be masters of human form. Uh, even if they're just going to do blobs and dabs the rest of their life, I, uh, I really believe that the test is can they master the human form. Right now, very involved with uh, uh, Aikens, you know, the Philadelphia artist and how he, he was uh, so taken with phot photography and motion photography and then translated that into painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of caught my enthusiasm of late. I always set up sort of projects, private projects that aren't necessarily related to my teaching, but something that I want to get into and I can pursue them for a semester, maybe a whole year. Uh, with Chinese gardens, it took me four years. Right now, I'm working on the Enlightenment and on the uh, development, impact of science and changing the, uh, the way we think about, uh, well, just about being human. And uh, my friend, my hero is William Stukeley, who was the first to really map out, one of the first to really map out Stonehenge and uh, Avebury Ring and that sort of thing. So uh, you, you have to keep some of these things going. I tell the students, because you're forgetting, you need to keep putting new in. And that means, of course, you have to read, because they'll always say, did you read all of these? As though I just had them cover the walls, I suppose. Plus, you need to keep bringing new in, because there's uh, a lot of new information coming along every field. I work in um, Latin American uh, history, and I also work in uh, China and Japan, and uh, that history. Well, there's uh, new information coming along. As, and of course it's true, even in the, I just picked up uh, Burl's book on Avebury, and the digs are going on everywhere. So you know there's always a new uh, footnote, if not maybe a part of a chapter of these books, whether it's Egypt or whatever. We had a wonderful meeting with Professor Moody that day at Lake Superior State University. The conversation turned to area history and what an impact the Sioux has had and still is having on our national and world economy, with it being the home of the famous Sioux Locks and its maritime traffic that passes through them from all corners of the world. We thank Professor James Moody for taking time to visit with us, and soon we are back on the road. Our next stop on our UP journey is an historic Indian burial ground, not far from the university. Then on to the Point Iroquois Lighthouse for a stroll along the shores of Lake Superior and a climb to the top of the lighthouse. 
Join us then as we continue our exploration of Michigan's eastern Upper Peninsula in a day trip that found us realizing more and more just how fascinating it is off Michigan's beaten path onto the side roads filled with the true spirit of Michigan. Well, you know, it never ceases to amaze me when I find off those Michigan back roads. We've been doing this for over 20 years, and the discoveries keep coming. Until we meet again, let's keep in touch online at michiganmagazine.com or follow us at twitter.com or stop by for a quick cup of coffee at our Facebook page. Wherever you are, Michigan Magazine is there for you to share the fun and excitement we experience each week here on RFD TV. Take care and be safe. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Club X Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Club X Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Club X on Mapes Road, Mile. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. TriPoint Connections, a church connecting to God, people, and community. TriPoint Connections invites you to rediscover church in a relaxed, refreshing atmosphere. Join us Saturdays for fellowship and worship. You'll find delicious food and fun at Timber Steakhouse, East County Line Road, South Branch, Michigan. You'll find delicious steaks, pizza, and a full menu with the best food in the north. Enjoy the fine food and karaoke fun at Timber Steakhouse, County Line Road, South Branch.